So uh, just to say, it's it's 11 o'clock. Um, this is the virtual bridge sessions. Um, Jason is not with me, but it was something that uh, Jason Miles Campbell from JISC uh, and I discussed about bringing together communities in Northern Ireland and Scotland together and getting uh, people who are interested in ed tech to just share stories, share their experiences. Um, it just so happened that the coronavirus started around this time as well. So we've decided to set up these daily 30 minute sessions. Uh, we're inviting different people in every day. Um, there, there is a, an open link that if you want to see the program, you can, you can volunteer to do a session if you wish. Uh, I know quite a few people uh, emailed me yesterday. So we, we have about 10 or 15, but we have 70 slots. So anybody who wants to present, feel free to jump in, throw in an idea, um, stick it in there and we'll we'll see you on the day that you choose okay um because i don't want to take up fiona's time and because she's now host and can switch me off at any time um <laughs> I'll, I'll hand over to fiona to tell us a bit more about how they're using OneNote um to record to record the experiences of staff and students in the college okay hello and thank you um, i'm not going to mute anybody in, unless uh, i feel the need to so i'm just leaving you <laughs> as you are um but hi what i'm going to do is start sharing my screen because i want to show you stuff rather than see my face all the time um so to share my screen and that should work so hopefully now you can see my uh one note notebook online uh what i've done I'll just talk you through this first and then I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to talk to you about um, for the next 20 minutes or so or until I get cut off. <laughs> um, within our college, uh, in the last maybe month or so, so certainly before, before all the virus outbreak, we were starting to think of um, how to capture learning. So more than simply the GTCS updates for lecturers, but for all staff, how to capture what's happening with learning. So when people go on a course or they go and uh, do a MOOC or whatever they're doing, um, how to actually capture the difference that's being made. Um, so we're trying to do a bit more tracking on that. So we set up this template um, and really it's just a, a placeholder for people to add their own sections and pages. Um, but we thought about using this in OneNote to um, use as a notebook. Um, so I'm going to tell you a bit more about OneNote Notebook um, this morning as well. It's not just about the learning log. Um, so the learning log is my example of what we're using or one of the things that we're using uh, OneNote for. What went off. I'm, go I'm going to... Um, Here's the official one and I'll tell... Here we go. Had to do a mute there, sorry. <laughs> ah, sorry. I didn't realise I was on. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I'm going to show you a bit in one note here, but then I'm also going to show you um, the same example, so the same template, but in um, other versions of OneNote, um, and I'll show you some of the differences that I'm finding, because what I actually notice is um, with our own digital services, for example, when we've got new staff starting to use OneNote, we're just recommending that lots of people go and do all the Microsoft courses and learn how to use the different Microsoft packages. But what I was finding was I would go and do the Microsoft training and then find, wait a minute, I don't have that feature. Um, so what I've realized is there's different features and different versions. I'm sure you all knew that anyway, <laughs> um, but I'll highlight some of the differences. Um, and I'm actually finding there isn't one perfect one. I end up needing all three versions to, to do all the stuff that I might want to do. So I'll start with the online one. This is the, um, you would get this on any browser. I'm using Chrome. But this could be the any device, any browser uh, version. Um, and so, yeah, just information here. And I'm going to go through the tabs on one of the other versions of OneNote because this one was hanging on me earlier. Um, but what you'll see across here is um, you have a dictate feature. So you can, oh, well, I'm going to test this live actually. Can I dictate in here? That works. Excellent. I'm doing what Kenji did yesterday. I'm doing a, uh, I'm winging it here and that actually worked. Excellent. So as you're learning information or as you're learning and, and tracking what you're doing, you can record, you can type, um, you can add multimedia. Um, the dictate feature is one that's available in the online version of OneNote, um, but it isn't there in the, um, in the 2016 version. So we'll come to that in just a minute. 
in your insert tab, you can add in audio. So when you add an audio, you're actually adding an audio clip as opposed to the dictate one, which will type for you, type what you're saying. But if you wanted to do little sound bites, you could add audio in here. Um, one of the differences, again, one of the other versions lets you add video as well. So I'll show you that. Um, and then you've got other tools in here. Immersive Reader, for example, will read back information to you. So that's the things about OneNote as opposed to the actual um, learning log. What I'll do now, I'll show you more in the 2016 version. This is the 2016 version that does exactly the same thing. So I've still got all of the same sections and um, pages within this, but it's just laid out differently. Um, so sometimes that's the difference when you're looking at different tools. You just, the things are there, you just have to find out where they are. Um, so I've still got the same pages in here. I've still got the same sections that I can flip through. Um, and each one of these sections, what we've done is just um, suggested what sort of content that staff might want to add into there. And then they can add their own sections and pages to build up that learning. Um, in here, so in the 2016 version, um, just needing to move that fire out of my way. Um, in here, you've got some slightly different tabs. For example, you've got a history tab um, where you can track authors. So if you were actually sharing your whole OneNote notebook with other people, with edit rights, other people can um, add in things, um, add in text or in anything that you can basically. But in this version, you've got the option to see who's adding what. So sometimes that's helpful. Things don't just appear. You can actually track who's doing what in there. Um, the other interesting or the other useful feature I'm finding in the 2016 version, there's that audio again where you can record little sound bites, but you've also got the option to add video. Now that's not a screen capture. That would just be um, like my video, you know, a, a video of me. And it struck me that that would be a useful thing to use if you were learning like a practical task, you might actually want to record, and you could even encourage students to do this, record a little snip every day of whatever practical task you're doing um, and using that record feature, um, you could track progress. So students would be able to, to show what they're doing um, and be able to record that. And what that does by adding in the record video, it just places a, an icon on your page and you just click that to play it back. Um, so that's quite a nice feature and it's only in the 2016 version that I've found. Um, now our college is bought into Office 365 so we have the 2016 version available. Um, other than that, you, you've still got the same standard features. The other one though that I'm finding more useful, or most useful, is the Windows version which has a lot of extra features and the Microsoft training, all the Microsoft training has been specifically about um, this Windows version of OneNote. So I'm going to point out some of the features in there. Um, good, it's free, it comes with Windows, but it's only on Windows. So if you don't have a Windows device, if you're using a Chromebook or if you're using the online version, you might not have all of these features. So that's what I was saying earlier about, I actually find it's quite useful using all three versions and, and having created this notebook, I can open it in all three versions so I, I can pull out the bits that I need. So, for example, um, you've got recently used pages in here. You can quickly access things. You can search the search features much better in here. So I was testing out that even searches all of my notebooks. Um, I can search um, the current notebook that I'm in or I can search the current section or the current page. So as you're building up, as you're recording your notes um, in different pages, just go back to that. If I was recording, for example, that I'd learned something to do with digital in this section, but then I might have something related to digital in another section, I don't need to worry too much about where I'm putting all of that because this advanced search feature lets me check all the sections and all the pages um, and you can keep adding your own sections and pages and building this up as a, a full learning log. And the search feature in this version, um, I'm finding to be the best one in terms of finding all of that content. So that's what I'm, I'm particularly liking on this version. Um, it also has the dictate feature, whereas the 2016 one didn't. 
Um, it has the recording audio but not video, so the video is only in the 2016 version. But the other one, this one, and this is the Windows version, this has a researcher tool. So if you wanted to search for something, um, let's see if that comes up, here we go. Um, I could actually search for, in this case, because I'm talking about a learning log, I might want to search for um, a particular course on something or um, something related to what I wanted to learn. And you've got an inbuilt search engine here where you can simply click on things and add them in. So if I was going to, for example, add a new page and I wanted to add in um, a new link here, I can just click on that. Moving things around to be able to add. There we go, and then add that. So I haven't had to copy and paste or anything. It's actually inbuilt into um, the OneNote features that I can go and do a search and I can put in a link and I could then um, come in and add more. So what I've learned here and note the impact because that was the point of this um, OneNote notebook was to actually record some of the impacts. What, what is it that you're actually learning? Um, so you might have on another page a list of things that you want to go and research or that you want to explore further. Um, but then what we were hoping to get out of this template was more of that, uh, what difference is it making? So what's the impact? So yeah, the researcher tool there, I'm liking that one. Um, and then the other big difference, sorry, I thought I turned my notifications off. <laughs> um, the other thing that um, I'm finding different between the three versions is this ability to share. So with the online version, you can, uh, well, with all three of them, you can share. You could share the entire notebook with or without edit rights, just the same as way as you would share um, a Word document or Excel. So all three versions have that ability to share um, and also to search, but search um, different parts. So sections and pages versus notebook and so on. What I find though is this Windows version, this one will let you send a copy of an individual page. So what we're suggesting that staff do within our own college is take a, a copy of this template so it becomes their personal notebook. So all of that impact on learning and what they want to do with their learning and or what they've done with it, what difference it's making, that's all personal information and nobody else knows. Which is good for that person, but we want to start sharing. We want to make sure that pe other people can know. And you might even have um, a manager within a team collecting some of the information from their staff. So, if, for example, um, ideas for their learning and development, you might have a manager of a team try to collect all of that together um, so that they can then explore that for a whole team. So, that, that's where I'm going with this sharing bit. Um, within the Windows version, you can send a copy of an individual page, but what that does is takes a static snapshot of the page and then you can share that with others. So that's quite a useful, um, a useful way to go if you've collected some information that you then want to share with your manager or the GTCS, um, the professional update that they're doing, for example, if you've been tracking all of your learning all year and you want to put something in um, for the GTCS update, rather than doing copying and pasting, um, you could copy an entire page and then upload that as a file. The more useful one though is in the 2016 version because what that lets you do is not just take a static copy, well it is still a static copy, but not just a single page, but you could actually copy an entire section. So if we had several pages in here or the whole notebook, um, we can export it. So you can export at page, section or entire notebook level. So you might have a section that's specifically for sharing with colleagues. Here's all the stuff that I've found or, or here's courses that I find really useful. Um, you might have them in a section that you can share as a static PDF or you could share it actually as a OneNote section. So say for example a manager wanted to collect 
all of the learning from their team, they might ask people to um, send them either a page or a section in OneNote format that you could then put back together as a, a OneNote. So the manager then ends up with a OneNote notebook um, that others have contributed to, but then can't edit again. Okay. Because that's the difference where if you simply um, shared this and shared the whole notebook, everybody else has edit rights. And then you've got issues with, okay, who's, who's changed or who's edited? That, that's one of the things Kenji's finding with his publicly editable Google Doc, uh, people can make changes. Um, and so in order to track those, that's back to that, looking at the history tab here, you can actually see who's changed what. So just throwing an awful lot of ideas and, and thoughts at you, I was really using this um, learning log as a, a hook, as an example. I'm just, one of the things that's making this more important just now, obviously, is that we've got so many staff who will be doing more learning, where, you know, depending on what their day jobs were, um, not everything can be done as normal. So there's an awful lot of learning happening just now. Um, and this is a good way of tracking and, and keeping a note for yourself, partly because of that use it or lose it. So a lot of the learning and skills that are being developed in the next month or two, um, keep a note of them, track them, because a year down the line, you might think, oh, wait a minute, I used to do that, or, or I knew how to do that briefly, but I've forgotten. And so that's a good way to, to keep track and go back. Um, I feel like I've talked 100 miles an hour there um, and, I've got <laughs> and I've gone through an awful lot of things and I've probably jumped about from different versions um, but I'm just about at my 20 minutes and uh, happy to take any questions. Or is that like just way too much all at once? <laughs> Can I ask a question Fiona? Of course. Yes. Well, you haven't mentioned notebook classroom. No, because class notebook is something different. Class notebook is um, specifically for working with students, although you do get a staff version of it. But with class notebook, every individual student or member of staff within the staff team, uh, they get their own personal one note notebook and the teacher gets the wrapper that is the content library and the collaboration space. So it's a bunch of OneNote notebooks plus extras specifically for working with a team where what I'm looking at here is a separate OneNote notebook on its own all by itself. It's just a standalone OneNote um, because you can have as many OneNote notebooks as you like. Um, so yeah, Class Notebook does have a place too, but we haven't linked this learning log in with a Class Notebook. Yeah. Yes, okay, thanks for that clarification that the focus is on professional development and, and learning from experience through this difficult and novel time. Thanks, Fiona. That was uh, just a thought there about my, my song that I've put in, Kenji was saying about building records. I don't have records anymore. I did used to have records because I am that old too. <laughs> um, but my, my song choice was um, the Beatles. And, uh, getting by with a little help from my friends and the thought there was um, if you capture your, your learning and you share that with others then yeah everybody else can benefit from your learning too. Fiona, um, I don't know if you can hear me but I, I just had to re-log in but um, <clears throat> have you, I know I'm in stereo, <laughs> uh, can you, have you found that the, the local schools in, in Fife are, are using think tools like OneNote? I have no idea. Yeah, see, so like I, I went to um, this teach meet in Falkirk and there's a guy there, Malcolm, who's part of the, the local authority and he, he's, yeah, yeah, he's, he, he trains everyone on those Microsoft tools. Um, he's like a level 20 million, whatever, certificate badge holding Microsoft person. But it's incredible. The OneNote is almost used like a complete VLE solution in some of the schools because they don't they don't ha really have access to anything else. And I, I see the the teachers creating masses of curriculum um, and delivering it via via OneNote um, to all the mm -hmm. students. And students take then personal copies. Like I I saw this a long time ago in Pebble Pad. Um, the, the one of the presenters who was talking about that when they created a course in 
whatever it happened to be, history, I think was the example he was showing me. Um, he, he created all of his content in, in Pebblepad and it was laid out like this, almost like a book. And in various sections, he'd had a space like he'd give the students an assignment to do, like fill in 500 words on something or here's a gap on some area. Could you add something into this? And then everyone took a copy of, of that basic resource. And then they had their, essentially their own textbook um, and they had a series of assignments that they'd already had pre-populated in the appropriate spaces and people could just fill them in. Um, and I, I, I see that used in a similar way in schools uh, with OneNote. And I, I, I think it's just such an underrated tool. It's, it's, it's really good. It's got, it's got an awful lot in there. And actually, in the, um, this is back on the Windows version, it has a tab there for a class notebook. So even though I'm using this as a standalone OneNote notebook, it still puts in the class notebook too. Um, so if you are using class notebook, you've got things like distributing pages to individual students, you can um, review the student work and so on. So I'm not sure why that tab's there with this individual notebook, because I don't have anybody, you know, there is nobody else linked to from this personal notebook that I can distribute to, but it's just there by default. Um, and then of course, the next layer above your class notebook is Teams because yeah. Teams gives you that communication thread on top of your class notebook. Can I ask if anyone else is using um, OneNote at all in, in their institution, college, university, or, or otherwise? Or, or Jason, do you know? Well, Hi, Jason. Hello, dear. <laughs> Are yeah, you wearing your kilt today? I'm not wearing my kilt today. No. He was showing me his kilt yesterday. It was a moment that we shared <laughs> online together. Was... You had to be there. And it's, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I put, so I was just on a, presenting on a Zoom call to a lot of colleagues, and it's nice to know Zoom can handle 350 participants fine um, earlier on, um, glitch-free. Um, actually, one of the examples, and apologies if you've already discussed this with me being late, is uh, Borders College. And um, uh, they won the CDN Digital Learning Award for the use of OneNote as an e-portfolio. And Dale Clancy down there uh, might be someone that, uh, uh, Kenji, you and I work on persuading yeah. to come on and talk about that. <laughs> Um, if you want, I would. If any, so I use uh, OneNote as a productivity tool. I have to say, and the fact that uh, all the tasks um, sync automatically, well, I can sync them with Outlook and things like that is all fantastic. But I find it's one of these tools that's a little bit mind blowing. It's uh, it looks relatively simple to start with. It's you're it's replacing the paper notebook, but um, the complexity that's available can be a little bit off putting. I think for staff. And um, Fiona, I don't know if you found any particular approaches that have worked in getting the take up to improve. What I was suggesting was just um, start with one section. It, it's difficult because it's, um, it's organic, isn't it? I mean, you would have to know in advance how you want to organise, how you want to do your housekeeping. So what sections do you want and then what pages within? So even in this example where we've set up a template, people might find mm, that those don't work for me and they might then later delete a whole section and shift pages within and move things around and that's absolutely fine and the, I think the main message is to start don't, don't get too hung up about what your structure is just get start just do something create a section and some pages and if you later want to move these you can move them you, you can move pages you can move sections um, you can link and as I was saying earlier, the search feature is really good. So it doesn't matter if things are in what might later be seen as the wrong page or section, because you'll find them again. Fiona, do you know if, I, th I think it does, but do you get like a, an immersive reader view in OneNote? That's that, the Microsoft tool that sort of strips out all the stuff around. Oh, you do? Right, okay, do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I find that really interesting. That's useful. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that reads the page back to you, so definitely. So in this version, this is the Windows version, you, you have both the immersive reader and the dictate. So you can you can both talk at your screen and it'll type for you and you can get it to read it, read it back to you with the immersive reader. If you were to choose a version, um, the online version, the desktop version and the app, what, if you had to choose one, what, what is the one that you think that students will probably gravitate to? Mm, that's tough because it depends on what device they've got, doesn't it? I had been using 
only the online version and the 2016 version um, and kind of going back and forth between those and it, it was only it's only since I started preparing for this session this morning that I was looking more at the Windows version and because it's got things like the researcher tool and the more advanced search I, I actually think I should be using this version more. And do you think I know the subtle differences between the app uh, on your phone and tablet and, and the desktop version and the online version. Do you think that you need to produce like separate training resources if you're expecting students to to use these things? Or is it good enough just to use the one version and hope that everyone kind of works out what the differences are? I think if you were doing the one version, you would have to highlight there are differences. And so if this feature isn't here, I, I think it said earlier that um, our own digital services are recommending that that all of our staff go and do the Microsoft courses, which is really useful. But when I first did some of the Microsoft courses on one note in particular, um, it told me about this researcher tool. Now that was about a year ago, and I couldn't find that anywhere because it's not in our online version and it's not in our 2016 version. Um, and so I just assumed that that feature wasn't available anymore. Um, but it's only in the last couple of days when I've been looking at this again, and there it is. So, so it is available. So I think it is okay to have one set of training resources, but you would maybe just highlight some subtle differences or acknowledge that not everything's available in every version. So does anyone else have um, anything they can share about using perhaps OneNote? Um, can I just add that um, it's obviously integrated into Teams. When you're using Microsoft Teams, there is an integration to OneNote, so that's always good to remember that as well. Yes, and when you're setting up a team, um, you have the option to um, create a OneNote or create a class notebook from an existing one or use an, a brand new one for you. So I, I was wondering, maybe some of the others, so Scott, UHI, are they using OneNote? Do they use Office 365 that much, these kind of elements? Hi, Kenji. Yeah, um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, UHI, I've got it uh, installed, um, but the, I think maybe like a lot of institutions, the rollout of the Microsoft uh, Office 365 suite has been, there's Office 365, get on with it. Um, um, <laughs> and, also, like we've been hearing, we've been directed to lynda.com now, uh, LinkedIn, um, and the Microsoft training videos. But, you know, staff just certainly at the moment don't have the time to sit through some of these videos. Uh, lynda.com, although it's very good, some of the lessons are, you know, you may watch something for an hour and actually the bit that you actually learn is about 30 seconds worth. So staff are not going to sit through 10 hours of training to find out how to set up. A, a page or or do a very simple what appears to be quite a simple task so yeah it, it is used in UHI and some of our colleagues are using it really well uh, in various different ways um, and a lot of colleagues are not using it at all they're they're some of them are not even using teams although they will be this week um, <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden there's a massive interest in all this stuff and um, so yeah it's sporadic but we are using it um, I just feel probably like many people feel like it could be better coordinated. It's such a big thing. I think Jason's already alluded to the fact that it is a bigger product than it initially seems to be when you go into it. And, you know, Fiona's given a great presentation there. I'm sure you could get another 10 people given great presentations in a totally different angle in this product. It's such a big product. So, yeah, sporadic, some great use, a lot of non use, um, like many of the, the a bit, bit overwhelming with the Microsoft Office 365 suite generally, the amount that it can do. and try to understand how each uh, each app integrates with the other apps. I mean, that was useful that if you want to say that you've sort of, sort of hierarchy there. I never knew there was a sort of hierarchy there between Teams down to OneNote, uh, Class Notebook down to OneNote. So that that's a useful sort of put it to stick in my head. So yeah, I think that's probably said enough. Thanks. Okay, awesome. So uh, we are, I, I keep saying the word awesome. I was listening to the video that we recorded yesterday for my session. And I think I said awesome, like a, a total, actually a total of, um, it was, I counted it 23 times. Uh, that, that is seriously, I, I've picked it up through my little pony 
in the fact that my daughters love My Little Pony uh, or have done. They they don't watch it as much now. And I seem to be the only one that watched the episodes now. So I, I don't know what happened there. But um, <clears throat> this is the end of today's session. Uh, unless there's any last second uh, questions. Uh, tomorrow we have a session from Walter. And otherwise, I'm just going to leave Jason uh, to tie off the end here um, and explain how we're going to go forward. Oh, that's nice. That wasn't going to be the point I was going to make. But uh, anyway, uh, just to say that we're hoping more Northern Ireland colleagues will join um, over the next well, a few days and the beginning of next week. They've only actually closed their colleges, certainly uh, yesterday at one o'clock. So they are actually uh, a little bit uh, later in coming to and still sorting out the, uh, the practicalities, of course, of m moving uh, to a different model. So um, hopefully get more input from Northern Ireland as we go. Um, that we continue on with these, and um, I, I haven't had a chance to look at what tomorrow's is yet. I think it's something exciting, and uh, I'll pass you back to Kenji because he's probably got the page open in front of him. <laughs> Um, and no, I, I know that Walter is going to be talking about productivity tools, uh, and, and it's an interesting session. Uh, we, um, uh, you know, it's useful now that we're at home, just managing your time, getting more things done. Um, I don't know if it deals with like um, how you deal with your daughters uh, throughout the day, but if, if there's a bit on that, I, I will personally find that very, very useful, Walter. Um, otherwise, uh, the recording, um, I've just finished uh, editing and getting the recording of yesterday's session. I will put that up onto YouTube in the next 20 minutes. Um, this recording, I'll start working on that just now, and hopefully we'll get that up uh, today within the next couple of hours. Um, otherwise, thanks for coming along, everyone. Uh, and we will see you tomorrow. And feel free to, to jump in at any time um, and just listen and pick up on things. And if you have something to share, please, please, please uh, go visit the, the program page and add in a suggestion, do a presentation, and we'll hear from you then. So until tomorrow, thanks for joining everyone. <laughs> and bring up see you soon. <laughs> Stay bye, bye. safe. <laughs> bye.